We want to move to politics now, and Congress is returning from its Thanksgiving recess tomorrow with time running out to get some big legislation passed before the end of the year. At the top of the long list, tax reform and avoiding a looming government shutdown. ABC's Gloria Riviera is on the story from our Washington Bureau. Gloria, good morning to you. Good morning to you, Dan. In the race to the finish of 2017, both parties are doubling down on achieving their version of success. The slate is packed. President Trump vying for support from within his own party on issues like tax reform and the budget, even as he defies many GOP leaders elsewhere. All of this as the clock ticks down. With the end of 2017 in sight, Congress has a lengthy and ambitious to-do list and not much time to do it. After a lengthy Thanksgiving break, Congress will be back on the Hill on Monday with only three weeks to get most of the work done before Christmas recess begins on December 15th. We're going to give the American people a huge tax cut for Christmas. Hopefully that will be a great, big, beautiful Christmas present. On Tuesday, President Trump will meet with Senate Republicans to discuss tax reform. A number of GOP senators have expressed concern over the tax bill. Well, what I want to see is the information to prove the kind of economic growth we're going to get with all of our tax provisions. The House recently passed a $1.4 trillion tax cut, and the Senate is likely to vote on its own version later this week. Lawmakers will also have less than two weeks to come up with a funding plan to avoid a partial government shutdown December 8th. And the pressure will be on by Friday for lawmakers as some state officials say the holdover cash, which funds health care for children of low-income families, will run out unless Congress acts fast. All of this as lawmakers are voting on a resolution on ways to handle sexual harassment scandals spreading in both houses of Congress. In fact, there are two members of Congress, Republican and Democrat, right now, who serve, who have been subject to review, or not have been, been subject to review, but have engaged in sexual harassment. On December 12th, all eyes will be on Alabama in the Senate race between Republican candidate Roy Moore, accused of sexual abuse of a minor, and Democrat Doug Jones. Moore drawing the ire of former NBA star and Alabama native Charles Barkley. I'm not even going to get into the women's stuff, but a guy, how can you be a white separatist and represent all the constituents in your state. Back on the Hill here in D.C., Minnesota Senator Al Franken and Michigan Representative John Conyers are both likely facing ethics investigations on bad behavior, sexual harassment. Those could result in punishments ranging from a reprimand or a recommendation for expulsion. Dan, Paula? Yeah, that is a big story right now on Capitol Hill. Gloria, thanks for your reporting. And for more political perspective, we want to bring in our chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz in D.C., who's there gearing up to host this week a little bit later this morning. Before we uh, move on, um, Martha, we want to say happy Thanksgiving. I hope you've had a good holiday weekend thus far. Uh, uh, first and foremost, the New York Times and Washington Post are reporting this morning that Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, is taking on a more limited role, even reporting that he's basically disappeared from public view of late. What do you make of that? Well, I think uh, two words, one name, John Kelly. Remember, he is a retired four-star general. He, when he first went into the White House, he made it very clear that there would be, which he is very used to, a chain of command and that even Jared Kushner would have to go through General Kelly to see President Trump. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's happening here. Chief of Staff John Kelly, uh, let's let's talk about um, uh, sexual harassment in, in Washington. The House is going to vote next week on a resolution that re would require all lawmakers and staff to complete anti-harassment training. I know this is a big topic for you coming up on the show this morning. Is the is the view right now that that Congress is handling these kinds of allegations appropriately? Where you look at the process to file any sort of sexual harassment claim, it takes months. It is absolutely filled with red tape. You have to go to counseling. You have to go to mediation. If you go to mediation, then you can't talk about what you say happened to you. This is something they're going to look at very seriously, and many are calling for big changes in that process. Yeah, it, it, Martha, is the sense that, the, that these rules were written by people in power, many of them men, in order Order to perpetuate their power? Well, I, I, I think there's a sense of that, certainly, and you just have to look at the makeup of Congress and, and you know who wrote those rules some time ago. 
Martha Raditz reporting in from Washington. Martha, Thanks, thank Martha. you very much. You and uh, a reminder, Martha has a big show. As always, this morning she's going to discuss the wave of sexual harassment allegations hitting Capitol Hill with current and former female members of Congress. Plus, she will go one-on-one -on -one with South Carolina Senator Tim Scott and the former chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen. It's all coming up on this week, later this morning, right here on ABC.